fuel it. And uh, with an obligation, is there like someone she's helping, like maybe her family or her or her partner or something I, like that? I, it is her uh, deceased partner. Ah, uh, okay. So that's really great. So let's put in obligation, deceased partner. That's all you have to tell us. She has something, some some kind of business for her deceased partner that she must. So she relieves stress by working on that project. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Um, she is dressed all in black Victorian attire and always has a veil on in morning attire constantly. Morning attire. That says it all. And do we have a name for her yet? Juliette. Belle Rose. And your character is complete. Does she have a does she have an alias? Does she have something else she goes by in the underworld? I think that she has uh I think the widow. I love it. She has made the acquaintance of a certain deceased individual who wishes to be reunited with certain items that are uh, currently, alas, being held at a certain um, safe deposit box at Sulford's Bank. If someone could... uh, You say like a ghost? Spirit? What? Deceased? Yes, Valkos. Just because... uh, Just because one has perished does not mean their voice has been silenced for eternity. Many, and, and many are know. most unquiet, as I think you know. Yes. They, do they have their faculties? Are they themselves? Are they not overtaken by madness? <laughs> my um, my friend tells me that um, they are in the peak of clarity. Their faculties still remain, and yet there is that which within that yearns to be reunited with that which they have sadly lost. I will break in for just a second to say, Mm -hmm. uh, to let everybody know, that the uh, ghosts uh, being uh, of their faculties is extremely rare, because um, the reason that Duskfall is surrounded by lightning barriers is because ghosts often don't keep their faculties or their identity. <laughs> mm-hmm. So uh, I will just say, Quellen, uh, if she has found a, a ghost that is uh, of its faculties, has found a very rare thing. Uh, go ahead, please. I'm sorry for interrupting. No, at all. Um, yeah, um, I know that uh, the sorrows of the passing will often uh, um, twist and bend the minds of our departed friends, but my friend assures me this one is in full possession of its mortal faculties, though it no longer, alas, possesses its flesh. How, how, how did he do this? How? Josephine, you ask me questions now for which there are no answers that I can provide. <laughs> A secrecy um, from my patron is, of course, sometimes required. You speak of the dead as if they live and walk among us, asking us for work. Yet, what you are simply proposing is that we do a job for something so rare, so unbelievable, that you (laughs) make it almost sound so easy. I personally don't believe it. Oh, I assure you, my friend, it will not be easy. Tell tell the witch that we want to meet them, if we are to do their job. This is a condition which I fear my my uh, my contact will be loath to uh, adhere to, but um, I can attempt to persuade her. Unless you have some other idea for how we shall fill our stomachs in the weeks ahead. And we oh. will take... We will... We will. Well, I feel we need more information, and and I, I want I want to meet this this spirit, this this ghost who we would be. We, we've got to work that into the deal, Celiac. You have to work it in, and I believe in you. You are very charming in your own ways. I know you can convince your friend. I, do. I can, but, of course, seek to change the terms of our arrangement. 
Is have this spark for our own use. You know, would be I to like not... you, but you talk too much well, about I... this spark. It's becoming infuriating. Now, listen, I believe I like the idea. I fear that um, in order to meet the uh, the soul that has uh, reached out to um, Quellen, my friend, might require some uh, uh, durational persuasion that perhaps uh, hunger will not allow. I like the job that you present to us, Juliet. If I must cast my vote, if this is a voting uh, situation, then it is for this electroplasmic heist that Crystal casts his die. Well, uh, Valkos, what say you? <laughs> to meet a ghost or become one. I'll follow your lead. Well, hopefully we're not becoming ghosts from this. That, that's, I'd like to not plan that outcome. <clears throat> I'm not ready yet. <clears throat> you look close. <laughs> well, yeah, thank you. Yes, one foot in. Uh, and uh, the entire thing explodes behind you. There were two hulls left uh, in action, and they were uh, wrestling with... Uh, the demon that Selyak had summoned that had formed a body out of like old machinery in the factories nearby. Um, all of those things are now kind of burning. You can't quite see them through the cloud of crackling smoke and fire. Um, there's a ton of electrochemical reactions going on, but you've uh, gotten your distance and you are uh, walking away in slow motion uh, with a look on your face. Please show me that look. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Yes. Beneath the veil. <laughs> beneath the veil. <laughs> yes. uh, and there's beneath. A, a whisper to the wind that's just, I got them, my love. Yes. Uh, and finally, I turn. Your uh, your vice uh, is obligation, right? Mm-hmm. And um, tell me a little bit about that. So I think I think it's being. Uh, essentially overcome by grief or letting the grief flow through her, like allowing the emotions to flow through. I, I imagine that there is some sort of abandoned area that she has chosen out. Of course, the body's body was taken out of Duskfall, but where she has set up either a sort of makeshift grave or, or altar some kind, you know, somewhere that she can visit um, and mourn her deceased and sort of remind herself what she needs to focus on and and how she needs to keep everything together and who this is for and why she's here and and remind herself of that but she it, it's like all consuming for for the day for her oh wow i love this so what a really cool version of the obligation vice is that <laughs> uh juliet is sort of addicted to mourning her partner um and so uh so uh, you uh, you now find this grave, and I also like that you said that you've had to set up this shrine yourself. That your partner mm -hmm. has no grave out there in uh, Duskfall. Well, n no one does. I mean, everybody right. is thrown into the the crematorium to prevent their spirits from infesting the city. So you've set up a little shrine to your partner on your own. Uh, perhaps your partner is out there somewhere as a spirit, but you think not. You think probably the spirit wardens claimed his body um do i have the pronoun right uh, uh uh let's go with her body okay perhaps the spirit wardens uh claimed her body you 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 can't be sure but you know that you mourn her mm -hmm. um and so um when you roll to uh, yeah and okay. tell me so you're kind of at this shrine just are you are you are you sobbing or are you? Yes, and I think it's like the whole walk there is a walk that they used to take together and everyone sees her all in black in her morning gear and she wails the whole way along until she gets to the shrine and, and then she cares for it, straightens everything up, makes sure it's clean, but it's just the tears just don't stop until it's all out of her 
and then she finally goes home when there's nothing left to cry. Um, incredible. Okay. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> it's a tough game, but what I like is that it means that Juliet, if she overindulges, it means that you guys work with someone who sometimes goes into these fits of mourning for many days at a time. Excessive grief. Either hungover or mourning. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's an interesting character. All right, let's go. Ahead. Well done, Juliet. Uh, you spend uh, many hours grieving at the shrine of uh, your poor, poor fallen... What was her name? What was her name? We don't have to uh, share it now if you don't want to. Okay, I'll get back to you with that one. Okay, get back to us. Um, she, she, she's lost to us for now. So, uh, and you haven't shared with your, uh, your crewmates uh, who this person was. It's mm -hmm. your secret. Um, and so now I turn the only things like that. I, I feel like Juliet would hang around Celiac, especially after spending days mourning. She feels like, I don't know, he's a bit of a, a, a holy man of sorts of, and she feels She wants more to be around connected. someone positive, someone up. <laughs> Be like <laughs> Celia Khan. Yeah. I so, think she wants to feel like she might have a connection, a closer connection to those she I, lost. And he's so closely. And I think, yeah, if you approach him, I, I, I mean, if you were walking the streets, keening with grief <laughs> and, and coming and going every week, in this way. Every week. If you're just kind of like sidling up. And I think Celiac is, yeah, like, wrapping bandages, soaking in this in this foul-smelling ichor. Mm-hmm. But, um, if you come to it's like, Juliet, I, I've heard you, uh, many. I've heard your sorrowful, pitiable wails. Yes. When you walk abroad to the altars of your departed one, whose lamented flesh has departed this plane. It kindles in your spirit such a lacrimose clangor. But there are those that could um, seek to find the spirit of the one that you have lost. There is always a spark that remains. If you seek, there is a chance that you will find. Grief is perhaps only for yourself. To soothe or to languish, to drown in your sorrow. But you can take action to reach out and touch them again. I could help you with this, if you wish. You could show me how. You, you could do this. Have you done this before? I have communed with those who have passed on. You cannot be too long in Duskwall without seeing their presence, feeling their presence. But yes. to find a particular one. Now this, this requires some skill. Tell me what you need. I will get it. I will need certain things. I will need a possession of theirs. Perhaps a scrap of them that remains. And I will need their name. Names have power. Yes. She pulls out a locket and inside the locket there's like a little black and white photograph of her and um, it's of the two of them together and she hands it over to Celiac. This was hers. This, this was uh, this was Ophelia's. Well, this was not Ophelia's. This is Ophelia's. And there is part of her that lingers in it still. G 
give me time to call to her, to find the appropriate, appropriate place and time. Yes. She may not appear to you in the guise with which you are familiar. I hope you understand. What, what do you mean? What, how, what would she be? When they return to move unseen among us, they perhaps will seek a vessel. Even those hulls that we destroyed recently contain the spirits of the departed. We perhaps would need a vessel to contain Ophelia. This could be a hull not unlike the one that uh, you destroy. <sighs> or perhaps it could be someone person and in yes. fact if I may if I may um, you do know that you do have one outstanding offer uh, that involves a spirit that has possessed a body um, there is a spirit mm -hmm. uh, asking you to go on a job for you that may be a way to find out a little bit more about the process of uh, mm -hmm. say getting a, a dead spirit to possess a body and <laughs> remain and remain stable inside of that body right this is a very delicate business and very dangerous, but there is perhaps someone I could consult? Yes. Please, please, please. I did not think any of this truly possible. I mean, I, I'd heard the stories, but I've, I've never seen or, or met someone like this myself. The people in Duskfall will tell you that the, deep, that the forces in the sea are just a resource, raw material to light a fire in our sky. They put their faith in science. But we who put our faith in something older know that if you have the right frame of mind, then anything is possible. May I keep, may I keep this for a time? May, may Ophelia's locket to remain in my possession. Yes, if you... Just keep it safe, please. As if it were my own soul. And he tucks it on a, in his person and, like... It's like... I believe there are things I must ask to my... My friend. Of course, yes. So... Um... Uh, uh, do you have a place that you're going in mind there, uh, Salyak Khan? I mean, I think I've, it seems like we want to talk to Quellen and convince them to let us, to let their, their, their patron be a little less mysterious. That in order to do right. this job, you wanted we to want talk to, to this person. Who yeah. The ghost is. Very good. Um, uh, before we go to do that, I want to ask Valkos. Valkos, do you have something uh, you have planned next, or would you like to go along on this uh, this visit to the witch? Or I think I think I'll yeah I'll go along with the team, but I have no idea what the plan is or what's going to happen. <laughs> I don't good. know why we're going. I'm just following blindly. Um, so you find yourselves at uh, Quellen's cottage, uh, and. Um, she uh, she uh, beckons you in and uh, is like, so you've thought about it. You've decided to help the spirit, yes? Salford yeah. Bank, yes? Yes. Ah. We, we, this. However, you have been so kind as to offer us this proposal. Allow us to answer with a proposal of our own. That we understand the value of remaining mysterious and unseen. But we also understand the value of trust between interested parties. And we will take this job if if I say we know who it is we are doing this labor for. Yes. Very well. I, I suppose I could Ask them to arrange a meeting, but I, I must say, uh, uh, you know, it's uh, quite dangerous for a spirit uh, in a, a human body in Duskfall. Uh, why they are, um, they are criminals uh, for uh, 
the raiment that they wear. <laughs> if you uh, take my meaning, um, it, it, he may not ag- not agree to meet with you. I have made study of the law myself and think this one particularly unjust. But no matter the danger, he will find in us no judgment. Very well. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and cut to a little while later when you receive word back from uh, Quellen that uh, this person that wants to hire you, this deceased person that wants to hire you, is willing to meet you uh, in the shadow of Rowan House on Rowan Way uh, that very night. Oh, shit. Shall we? While I do, I'm going to just pull um, Juliet to side and be like, if I'm correct, you're being led by laws. Laws? Yes. Mm. Never ends well. And I just keep walking with the team. <laughs> Very good. Um, you come uh, uh, into the near you. Uh, and the person pulls back their cloak and what you see beneath is not the visage of someone like caked in grime who's been living hard on the street but uh, someone who looks like that they should be quite well off that their mustache has been uh, manicured uh, and uh, uh, the hair is quite short uh, and even the clothes are a fine make underneath the uh, the, the rags um, that they grabbed uh, and he looks at each of you and it's like uh, he moves his head with purpose first to Celiac then to Juliet and then to Valkos and he is like I am speaking to the remnant yes most perceptive hmm and to whom do we have the pleasure of speaking? Uh, I am. Let's actually use a name out of the book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he he doesn't give up. A bis- he looks human, though. Other like, would we be able to be like, oh, that's a ghost in a body? Totally like, you know, like- um, actually, he looks completely human. That is a okay. very good question, and that and I will answer it thus. He is completely human looking in every way. Uh, here we go. Camelin. My name is Camelin. Camelin Savoy. Well. At least that's the name of this flesh that I wear. And what oh. is your name? Your real name? Well, now. I would keep that a secret. There are of power course. in names, as I'm sure you well know, especially for someone like me. Right. Uh, 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 and his face starts to shake. And for a second, you just get the superimposed image of another face there, just for a moment. And the other face isn't quite so finely manicured. It doesn't have quite such a patrician brow. It doesn't have quite such a coiffed and uh, put together uh, demeanor as the face that uh, he currently wears. Something savage about the face. Beneath the face. (laughs) Yes, Camelin Savoy will do. Some things that belong to me. And perhaps um, also when our association comes to its fruition, we can have further conversations about the techniques that you have employed to uh, maintain your current situation. Please. Do we understand each other? He looks to Juliet, who just said, please. And he's like, you've lost someone. Yes. Hmm. Well... I would give you this counsel, madam. Let go. They're gone. 
I'm not the man I was when I was alive. Even if the person that you miss still exists somewhere out here in the ether, chances are they haven't had the strength of will to maintain their psyche as I have. No, you did not know her. We can talk about uh, techniques perhaps later, perhaps if I am greatly pleased with how the job went, Selyuk Khan. Do you th- will you do this thing for me? I kind of look at my compatriots. <clears throat> you have been so kind as to show yourself to us in good faith. We will do this thing for you. Um, Juliet, uh, you see uh, Celia collapse. Uh, as soon as they yank okay. the bottle away from him and begin walking back to the bank. Um, okay, uh, well then I'll, I'll turn to, to Valkos. Quick, go get him. Hey, and I ain't there. I'm home. Oh, you left completely. No, you did not joking. stay behind. Okay. <laughs> He's joking. He's joking. No, I'm literally, I see that yeah. and I'm like. I'm going to put in Valkos's hand my line thrower grappling hook. Oh, wow. Uh, and say, go get him. And get out of here. I, I don't know what that code means, but it cannot be good. We must get back to our place. And if you cannot get there, it, just whatever you do, don't go through Brightstone. Make sure you go down Crow's Foot. It, just, just keep to yourself, okay? Uh, you talk too much. I get his fuck yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, always, always. And then I go always. and I just like... <laughs> I go woof, 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 with this. I wish to know more of what you do. Teach us. For we are attuned to spirituality to a degree. We wish to know more of this spirituality. Will you teach? Give me the box. And I hand him the box. He pulls the stone out and the second he uh, touches it, once again you see his real face kind of superimposed over uh, the body that he has taken for a moment uh, and it glows with like a kind of a golden light for a second and he says you are friends to the reconciled now we will do business again yes I'm sure (laughs) of it and when we do perhaps we can teach you more of the secrets of defying death um As he as he shuffles off into the mist, shoulder a uh, hand on Valkos's shoulder. It's true what they say. You really are the closer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And that is. Someone has to clean up after us. <laughs> I am going to decrease the heat on our crew. <laughs> uh, you're the only one worrying about this. We are almost <laughs> wanted. Know. We are one tick away from being wanted. <laughs> Essentially, yeah. our next score will make us wanted if we don't yeah, do yeah. this. Yeah, Valkos <laughs> is off getting HJs from ghosts while uh, <laughs> while uh, while our friend Juliet is doing the uh, tough the tough work of making sure the crew doesn't get taken to prison. <laughs> Uh, uh, what and not only I that, do? not only that, but Valkos hasn't Valkos like kind of gotten into a little bit of a fight with your character before and told her to be quiet or something like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, multiple times. Don't worry, that's at the back of her mind always. Yeah. Um. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, a project that was um, out there was this one that um, he was discussing with. Juliet of mm. reconnecting her in some way with the um, her deceased partner uh, Ophelia was it? Yes. And um, so he might come come to her and uh, and see if he could if if that's still something that she's interested in. Yes, I, 
Definitely. How can I help? Uh, I am serious. You have given me the locket, which still retains some echo of the essence of Ophelia. I must find her and um, find an appropriate vessel. Someone who is, uh, and here maybe who maybe like swivels over to look at if Alcos is there. Someone who is uh, perhaps amenable to being an empty vessel, a tabula rasa, upon which can be written another personality entirely, just for a time. <laughs> and what Seljak is is uh, offering is that he will call up call up the spirit of Ophelia and put it into Seljak or put it into Valkos rather so that you can have a little tete-a-tete uh-huh, uh-huh, which is causing a lot of conflict in Juliet mm-hmm. who is like oh of all the bodies of all the bodies you could put my dear Ophelia I think uh, it this may really- be Really interesting. I think this would prove not only um, healing for the the sorrows that still continue to as- consume you, but would also aid in a, how shall I say, team building, where those uh, suspicions and tensions that may rend the fabric of our small association uh, may be knit together and drawn into a tighter accord, yes? My best tension. Hmm. Well. Of course, Valkos, you would need to be okay with me speaking to you quite a bit. Ah, I see. Comment on chat. Yes. I mean, you wouldn't necessarily be talking to me, but... <clears throat> yes. I understand. I draw, let let me think on the vessel, Celia. No, 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 no. I think this is a fantastic idea. I'm used to this. I will never do anything stupid. You can trust me. Only if all parties agree, will I perform the necessary rites. Do you need time <laughs> to think? No. This 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 can be the plan. Um, of course, uh, of course. The biggest problem, I think, is I don't know where she is. Leave that to me. And uh, so I guess I'm going to try to uh, let's let's just go for it now. Why not? <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what sort of mechanical benefit we get out of this, but it's fun. <laughs> so let's, right, exactly. Let's do it. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. So I'm going to make a <laughs> clock. I'm going to make a clock called Summon Ophelia. Um, Mm -hmm. I think that because Ophelia passed in some sort of terrible Sparkrite accident, is that, am I understanding that correctly, Juliet? Accident? Yeah, or was it a murder attempt? Right, that's that's a big thing that I don't know. I think that this clock, I think this is tough. This seems like a real essential nature of the crew type activity. So I'm going to make it an eight segment clock. Ooh. But okay. when you do this, it won't just have a story uh, effect. It will actually, you know, create something, some sort of in-game mechanical benefit in addition. Okay. 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 And uh, here's the question is, is this something that only Celiac can contribute to or can Juliet also progress this clock? Um, what a very interesting question. Uh, normally, uh, a, normally a long-term project is only completed by one player, but I don't see why it would have to be that way. I would allow you to work on it if you gave me a good reason to. Okay. I'm going to sure. call it Summon Ophelia, and I want to know what action during downtime our friend Seljak is using uh, to fill up this clock. I mean, it's a tune, of course. Right. Okay. Um, so if the spirit is out there somewhere, you are going to summon Ophelia using the locket. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's see how it goes. 
Uh, describe your ritual and then roll your dice. How many do you have in a tune? Two. Okay, very good. All Tell right. me about your ritual. Okay, so um, you you, I've got the uh, the name, and the uh, um, and the locket, the fetter, if you will, the mm-hmm. anchor. Yes, this uh, this f- physical fetter, the hook in the world of the flesh, which decays, declines, not the chaotic spiritual dimension which is eternal and uh so you'll so you might see uh Celiac just like kneeling in a with this with this locket like pressed to his forehead and around him on pieces of paper you just see Ophelia's name written like like a uh, uh, g- graphomaniacally just like obsessively forwards backwards anagrammed in a diamond in a in in various like polyhedral shapes like sigilized um and and uh and like if for a second like you might see like little ghostly hands just like touching and caressing all these as like the many many dead uh spirits that he sees that he's asking like he's basically like (laughs) <laughs> Have you seen this person? <laughs> and, and like you'll you'll just see him just kind of like looking at nothing. It's like, of course, description. And speaking in other languages, like <laughs> and then you're like, is he speaking backwards? Like, it's a grand yes, <laughs> like, and so that's that's what's going on off in the corner of the grotto. Very good. Uh, let's. That's an excellent, excellent description. Let's roll uh, and see how go many go. ticks you clear on this eight-segment clock. Go. Roll them bones. Oh. Um. Okay. Three. A three. Um. Ophelia's a signal is weak. You have not been able to. Uh, establish contact with her you have only been able to uh, kind of get other spirits perhaps out there searching for her you have okay. uh, you have cleared one segment of the eight segment clock okay um and you've been working on this for days maybe weeks because this is a downtime activity right um and like like me <laughs> and it's that thing too like if you come to check on me like like you, you, I turn to you, and the the crystal clear face is suddenly super fleshy because you're seeing a super, just like Jared describes, a superimposed face of a ghost that I was just talking to, like drifting off. It's like she's very dim, very far away. But I oh. am building the chain that will draw her to us, link by link. Um, and so um, I don't know if your character would be creeped out by that, but I certainly am. Uh, <laughs> what a creepy, creepy, creepy man Ross Bryant is. I, I mean, Celia. <laughs> um, uh, I so, mean, uh, Celia. And so uh, one one pie piece has been cleared in the clock, and that is something you can continue to work on. I. Th- yeah. Um. Let's see. I, I was thinking of indulging my vice, but could I do so in a different way this time, right? We established that she definitely, you know, goes mourning and wailing down the streets, which I think is a regular occurrence. Yeah. But Let's see. I'm, I'm looking at five stress here. Probably a good idea to get, get some of yeah, that cleared. Yeah, I think just a little bit. Um, but, you know, still an obligation to her deceased partner. Could it be in... Um, trying to find some information on what happened to Ophelia. I, I think absolutely. Um, so what action would... Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, but when you walk out of the uh, ink lane, uh, you are grabbed by two blue coats. Shit. Oh. <laughs> who take you back to their precinct for interrogation. I think she, she tells them, she says, 
Do not act like you are any better than me. You're all corrupt pigs anyway. And she spits in their face, and I will oh take my God. getting beat to shit. <laughs> uh, and you won't resist it? You're not going to resist one stress. Fantastic. Oh, the widow is strong. Yes. So strong. Uh, strong of will. They learn nothing from you, and they don't even beat you up that bad. Ugh, these blue coats. Their reputation is exaggerated. You can handle them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Perfect. now, I love that. would have that. turned very differently if I found out that they beat you up, by the way, just so you know. <laughs> really? <laughs> yep. Falcos would have literally gone on a hunting spree. <laughs> Well, uh, I, was, yeah. I was like, I just feel like, I don't know, it would have been like a good, you know, motivating factor, right? <laughs> like, for, but, you know, strategically, this makes more sense. So, um, so yeah, I mean, uh, as we are starting to do more together, you know, we have to be a crew, not only in name, but in our relationships to one another. Stand for one another. More. And uh, I feel that we are starting to do that anyway. Uh, I noticed a little less heat on our back. Thank you, Valkos. Mm. And um, we uh, will be moving up together, but I think we have skipped the very important question of I know what I hope for, but what do you all want in this city? A peaceful death. (laughs) (laughs) That's the best answer after a long pause. (laughs) I don't think I ever expected that from you, Valkos. Interesting. Well, you don't know me, and it's neither true. do I know you, but we're getting to know each other, and what I want is a peaceful death. Okay. I, in yet? game terms, that might mean that Valkos wants to earn a lot of coin, <laughs> fill right, up and his reti- stash, <laughs> and then retire. <laughs> retire comfortably, yeah. Retire comfortably. Um, yes. You must walk a bloody road sometimes to end your journey in a peaceful way. Yes? These are the paradoxes <laughs> of this fallen world. And what, what do I you? wish for? I wish for the sacred places of my people here. To thrive once again. Okay. The gods that have been forgotten. Their names absent from the tongues of the living. They should live again. Like that demon you brought back. Demon. Do you know, Alcosti? The people say that we, that we are born of demons. We Tychoros would say this is the other way around. That we are close to the elemental, pure, spiritual force of this world. Whereas it is you, in your common abjection, that have been corrupted by it. It is you, to us, who are the demons? <laughs> what I summoned was a splinter of a god. And gods can be beneficent and destructive in equal measure. It only matters how you appeal to them. So you seek to influence. The ways of thought of this city, perhaps. Perhaps. Or in brief, I wish... I wish to found a church. That seems, uh... 
a noble and uh, doable feat, I think. Mm -hmm. Yes. The material things of this world have all been stolen. The property of Duskwall is theft. And what we perform... I do not consider this to be theft. Mm. This is repatriation. Indeed. We are a bit of a similar thought, actually, but in different results. I want this town to have free thought flourish in it. Freedom, yes. My time in the Spark Rites, this, what happened to Ophelia, it's not the first time that such an accident has come down upon them. It is clear to me that the elite of this city are stifling innovation and and science and forward movement for their own gain for whatever reasons they have but this is not right and i think maybe the only way to make a difference is to uh, be one of those controlling the flow so that it can move more freely they must be removed Mm. So we have a messiah. It was a dictator. And someone who just wants a peaceful death. A tool, perhaps. Mm. Yes. No. Please do not be offended by what I say. I'm simply thinking allowed the way we can work together. You see, I believe that each and every one of your goals is achievable. Let's say, for example, we visit the Sparkrites, cut off their head, perhaps maybe install someone of our favor to them. Then we will begin taking over, you see, start to influence people, depending on the person that we put there. And I'm very good at cutting heads. <laughs> so, maybe the moves and actions that we take from now simply advance our goal towards this. It would be. Um, and, uh,. So she is talking a lot about that. Um, at one point, someone asks her uh, if uh, an alternate fuel is possible. That, is she, that they know that the Spark Rites have been working on that for a while. Uh, and she says uh, the science doesn't support it. She wants to believe it's possible, but the current science says that it's not. What were you and Ophelia working on when uh, Ophelia had her accident? I mean, I had assumed that was, we're always working on that with the sparkers. I mean, to be able to find another method is, would be the solution to so much uh, death of the, uh, you know, hunters going out there, but also I guess we would have less use for the hunters, but needing to go to such risks to, to have these protections. Um, it's interesting, right? The Leviathan hunters would hate to see that, that alternate fuel be yeah. developed. But also right now, it seems like Una Pharos definitely knows that it, a, a, an alternate fuel is possible. You know from working with her that she knows yeah. that it's possible. Yeah. And she's really downplaying that possibility. And she's focusing on her new defense grid project, uh, which everybody seems very excited about. Um, I've just, you know, been working on my studies, uh, continuing to further science for this flourishing city, as you know. She looks very uncomfortable as she says, Juliet, work can be such a comfort, can't it, to one who is grieving. I was so, so sad when we had our little accident. I'm sure you were, as we all were. Well, I wish you well. And Wait. she starts to move. I'm going to take her hand that I assume, you know, is shook or something. 
Una, you know, I've been thinking perhaps I could be of use in, in, in this project that you are working on. It sounds exhilarating. Can we maybe speak more on it sometime? Juliet, I- I'm sorry, your guild status was revoked. Please let go of my hand. Let I'll go. Grip it so tightly. <laughs> uh, a look of, and, a and look of fear comes into her eyes, and the security detail moves forward to push you away. <clears throat> I'm, I'll, I'll go Nidric. I think that um, I think that Celiac, of course, has a personal distaste for the uh, for the spirit trafficker, but he has been meditating so long trying to get into the headspace of Ophelia that um <laughs> that he's finding himself becoming more and more kind of like attached to you oh. um <laughs> not, not 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 like in in a way that is that is like not in any way kind of like like erotic or or anything it's, it's, <laughs> sure, it's like sure <laughs> it not 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 like he's not like the emotions of Ophelia are taking him over but that like it's being used as a conduit for that emotion. He's like, it's le- it's less that that he's. It's more like he finds your voice in his head sometimes, mm. or like um, like the 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 he'll just find himself crying for no reason and realize it's because you're wailing in the streets, um, because he's like using this this locket to channel your emotions to reach out to find Ophelia, and so. He's almost like finishing your sentence, like, yes, yes, freedom for the, uh... The spirits wish to be free. No. Can I get it from the person presenting? That's Una, Una? Ferris. Yeah. I would be... S- Falcos. please, <laughs> please. Here is her address. This is where she lives. Um, this is her... <laughs> This is where she works, and um, I would actually, love you know for what? you to go. I'm home. actually going to try and talk to her. That's going to be my. That's what Valkus is going to do for the first bit. Okay. Um, so this is an information gathering role uh, to see if you can, uh, if Valkos can somehow get the order of the presentation out of her. Um, and uh, Valkos, are you going to try to intimidate her in a dark alley, or are you going to try to? Um, uh, seduce her in a crowded tavern. What are you going to do? I'm actually going to try and you know, ch- you know, chirp. So I'm going to try and chat her up. You know. Hey, all right. Wow. Hey. This is a side of Valkos we haven't seen. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. We're going to eat like and kings, though. Juliet yeah. is going to stay at home, envisioning what she hopes is Valkos beating like <laughs> the shit out of Una, even if though she knows that's not their plan, but that is what she sits oh, and relishes man. in. Brilliant. Brilliant. So I can let you know that Valkos can arrive to be beside you as you finish this operation. Hold me down. Hold yeah. me. <laughs> oh, he probably is going to have to give you an extra die. Awesome. So he awesome. is holding you down. Okay. Yeah. Well, we've really gotten a lot closer in this time. Uh, oh, are you kidding? Still have an item left to use for my gadget, which I once again I'm gonna put in the capable hands of Valkos. Okay, you used this last time. Once more, and I'm putting the line thrower grappling hook into his hands, I'm like, please don't let go of me. And I look and I'm like, I will never let go of you. And I point and fire at Batman. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, you've created- I'm gonna like look to, to Juliet and be like, you're better with words than me. I think I need you to say something. I need you to stir these people crazy. Pretend you're hurt, angry, yeah. confused. You are simply an employer here. The ghosts, they're crazy. Okay, yes, it you're is. He's dra- to indulge. I need to indulge in my obligation. <clears throat> Yes, your obligation to your deceased partner. Yes. Um, yes. So I will begin to make my way. <clears throat> let the let the emotions flow through her and make her way to Mist Shore Park in Six Towers, which is where she's set up this little <clears throat> shrine 
to Ophelia. Right. And uh, and the wailing is starting. And I, she's got these handkerchiefs that she just goes through m- multitudes of them because the tears, they come and come. Um, this time, she is going to collect the handkerchiefs that are full of these tears of sorrow and seal them in a uh, little container bag for experimentation later. Jesus. Oh, interesting. <clears throat> wow. Maybe they have some sort of ectoplasmic resonance. Uh, Perhaps. Uh, There's, there must be there must be power in grief and it could, I would yeah. find it. Could help actually um, finding finding the, uh, the spirit of your loved one. Mm-hmm. Um, I I will say, I think that the people of Six Towers are starting to notice your regular uh, grieving walks mm-hmm. through Miss Shore Park. You've become like a La Llorona type uh, character. Yes. Uh, the children, the gutter snipes know about you. The uh, the underworld might know about you. And uh, I always stop and speak to Ophelia as well. Oh, you do. Mm-hmm. But even though we haven't we haven't managed to contact Ophelia no, yet. No, no, was- no. I'm speaking to, you know, the shrine, the, the right. altar. The, there's no answer yet. Right. Well, what do you say to her? <sighs> Ophelia. Oh, if you could only see me now, what would you think? I am keeping such strange company these days. I, this translucent religious man who means well, I think, and in fact is helping me, helping me to find you. And, oh, Valkos. <laughs> In fact, when you take the violence away, I, you two actually have a lot in common. This <laughs> says exactly what's on his mind. It is a um, protector, I think, of sorts. But I've... Um, I'm growing fond of them, but they it's no replacement for the loss of you, Ophelia. We were the perfect equation. Now I feel myself spiraling out of control. I will stay steadfast. I see everyone looking at me here every time I come. I mourn you, and I will mourn you until I get to see you again. It's okay. They say this park is haunted. Yeah, maybe I can add to those stories for them. Until you are I being see watched. You. you are being watched. You, you notice children watching you, but you also feel presences among the, among the bushes and the trees. They say that young lovers who could not be together came here to take their own lives. I hope it will not come to that. Till we speak again, my love. Roll your... Yes, so I'm aware of why your guild status was revoked. After the accident, you made some accusations. Is that what you're trying to do here? Convince me once again that the Spark Rites were involved in some conspiracy? I'm sorry for what happened no. to your lover. But it was not the Spark Rites' responsibility. Perhaps if certain safeguards had... Forgive me. If certain safeguards had been in place... Well, hindsight is twenty twenty. <laughs> I heard Valkos at the back of my mind. <laughs> this is sounding more and more like a threat. Well, he made you angry. <laughs> he really did. Oh, yeah. man. Threat. Amazing. Oh, oh hang that out. Valkos has paid off. Fantastic. That's awesome. 
Well, that's a reward for the great role play just now. Yeah. Let's um let's take a look and see. <clears throat> uh Valkos is missing. Hmm? He's not come back. I don't know. He's around doing whatever it is he does with those spirits. <sighs> I'm a little worried. But I know he can handle himself. I can see, you know, in his eyes that um, he is hollowing himself. When the spirit comes and goes, it gives of itself and it takes as well. This, right. these, these passings do not come with and without consequence. I believe our friend Mr. Welkos is perhaps being cored out from within. If he persists in his course, there shall be very little of what was once there. I've seen it happen before. Well... Uh, we... Hmm. When he returns, then, um, perhaps we should, uh, sit down and have a talk with him about this. Perhaps. These, these sorts of things should only be conducted with the most precise ritual, um, supervision. Especially if we are to have him be the sanctified and prepared vessel. And he pulls out your locket for your lit lamented of you. Right. I would not I would not wish him to despoil his material before this no. reconciliation can I be don't, brought to fruition. I would not want to break Valkos in this process either. Hmm. Um okay, well he's you not have, here. If if I may, you have yeah. you have options for your next <laughs> But I could be I, I could be swayed. I I think I think it would be unwise and you know cruel for us to partake of um, the taking of a life without Valkos there to enjoy. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> who who am I to deprive my friend of uh, exactly one of life's more rarefied pleasures? Yes, and and perhaps it would remind him, you know, sort of ground him once more in his own flesh to do something mm. like that together when he joins us once more. Um. So you've just. Dis- mm. I had thought that at, at times, uh, if things become desperate, uh, Miss Juliet. Yes. Yeah, Ophelia could not be found by a uh, means of attunement, and perhaps a more practiced hand could take a more uh, aggressive approach. In times like this, when spirits must be uh, found in this way, a hunter is required. And at times like this, this is when Celia calls upon the services of Chuck. Oh, Chuck. How we will need you. <laughs> Hmm. Um, and um, Juliet, you're the one who sees a silhouette a faceless black figure standing watching you through the branches of these you are completely entranced you are completely uh, completely head over heels for whatever this this whoever this is has charmed you completely uh it's as if dracula is you know using his mesmerism to draw you away so uh this figure this silhouette has not played its hand it has not jumped out into the clearing but it is trying to draw juliet away um, and uh, uh, the inspector okay. and Dr. Adelton and all of the blue coats are kind of looking around because they are they are seeing the rain. Uh, and Dr. Adelton goes, "So you've created a a bit of a shower." <laughs> I feel like they them. don't know that this thing is here. Yeah. I feel them. I feel them. <gasps> is it you? Is it you? Is it is it her? And I'll go crawling oh, towards fuck. the bushes towards where I see this figure. 
Here now, follow her. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that there is like a link of chain like up into to, to Celiac's hand, and it's almost like like having a bloodhound lead lead the lead and, this. Oh, if you yeah, if you're holding onto the chain, Judith even turns and like yanks the chain away from you. And just Great. let me go and runs towards the the yeah, figure. Yeah, holding the inspector's hand, and be like, come and. Uh, uh what happens, Juliet? You arrive in front of this figure, and you see that it is indeed humanoid, and you see uh, what you see is Ophelia. You see 100% your lover, Ophelia, and she reaches out a hand to caress oh. your cheek. My love, my love, please, I've missed you so much. Oh and you allow her to do that, and as she caresses your cheek, um, I need mm -hmm. you I can see it back there. Perhaps you perhaps you see its shining eyes, mm -hmm. but it doesn't look like Ophelia to you. Great. Um, yeah, yeah, Ophelia turns and all I see are these eyes that seem to like <laughs> Hitchcock zoom boom, out at me. And uh, <laughs> I'm uh did that consequence. Josephine, I'm just gonna ask, just for the viewers and listeners, mm -hmm. why did you decide not to? Um, because Juliet thought it was Ophelia. By all means, in front of her was her deceased partner. Her vice it was before, like, literally, uh, what else? She wouldn't have resisted. She would have let her take over, which is what is dangerous in everything that we're dealing with and our long-term project is that 100% Juliet would let her take over. Right. Okay. So playing your character, uh, and I mean, I wish, I will probably, we I guess I should take care of the stress. Uh, my stress. Yes. In obligation to deceased partner. Hmm. Would I do anything differently this time? Let's think of all the ways that I... It's such a strange well, vice. they are calming Miss Shore Park looking for you. So is there something right. you can do other than crying at her grave? Because yeah, right. that's right. how you were picked up last yeah. time. I mean, technically, you could have said that that version... That, I mean, again... The, when they caught you the first time around, that was technically you reducing stress. But no, actually, I quite like the idea of you having to think of something else. This is great. To, yeah, I... <laughs> mm. Yeah, um, I, I like that idea too. Okay. Um, let's see. I, in obligation to her... <sighs> what if I... Can I do something to Unifaros? Can I do something yeah, to certainly. Sparkry? I'm trying to... Yeah. yeah. Well, and look, you can't do anything that would require no, an entire yes, yes, score, but maybe you do something... No, but can I, like, um, I don't know, prank her? Uh <laughs> yeah, you can. You could. I mean, something like that might help you. Yeah, let's... Let's... I want to see her suffer a little bit. Let's, let's lay some harmless, but annoying... Well, you know, maybe little like traps outside of her door that she'll have to walk across that just totally like uh, soil her clothes. Oh, wow. So they're kind of wow. like stink bombs? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I love this. So you spend like an entire <laughs> night setting so up these petty. sort of like remote, uh, re remote detonator stink bombs like mm -hmm. uh, outside the door of her apartments and then you wait for her to exit to try to get into her carriage and when she does they go off explain to me what these things are exactly and what happens to her uh i think it's just a a um perhaps a little tinkering a little tweak on the uh or like a s smoke bomb of sorts um but instead has like this this musk this odor that clings not just to her clothes but to her skin and it should smell of death oh, oh i love that so the uh, death has to follow yeah. her in the way that it follows <laughs> juliet uh very good um so uh, i'm actually going to no matter what this is going to reduce reduce stress for you okay but i'm actually going to do a fortune roll right now for una to okay. see how well she handles this, meaning she could even avoid it altogether. So the spark rights are level four, I believe. Let me make sure. I'm gonna roll her tier. Yeah. Because she's the head of the organization, so it's not just her avoiding this, she has people helping her. 
So here we go. We're gonna roll for her. And I rolled. You're gonna. You're not gonna believe this. I rolled four dice. I rolled a three, a two, a one, and a two. None of her assistants yes. catch it. Yes. She comes out of her apartment one day and is sprayed with this death stench. Uh, that clings to her as she has to go to a series of meetings with the city fathers <laughs> and the different yes. administrators. Um, and Alpha she smells House. of death. Yes. And you actually see her like sobbing or maybe the, the chemicals are just making her eyes water mm -hmm. as she coughs and gets into her carriage uh, screaming and shouting for her assistants to help her. And she was very controlled last time you saw her, but you see her completely lose her shit like, what is happening? Who, who has allowed this to happen to me? Love it. <laughs> That's I right. love that. Yes. Now you may roll your lowest, uh, your lowest attribute, and Ugh. that is how much stress you will clear for this. I guess resolve lowest attribute. How many do you have in resolve? One. One. <laughs> yes. Okay. This is okay. the amount of stress you'll clear. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yes. Oh my gosh! <laughs> A six. That's amazing. A six. I wow, mean, that wow, was wow. very satisfying, to be honest, very. to watch and see unfold. So. Okay, oh. excellently done. Does that mean I clear um, six stress? Uh, yes, a vice roll is like a resistance roll in reverse. Rather than gaining stress levels, you clear stress levels. The effectiveness of your... So make an attribute roll using your character's lowest attribute rating. Clear stress equal to the highest die result. You clear six stress. How many stress did you have? Wow. I had uh, eight, and now okay, I have so two. Okay, so you have two left <laughs> over. Yeah, nicely done. That was very satisfying to see that happen mm -hmm. to Una Ferris. Oh, yes. Yeah, and I think Juliet comes back to the grotto full smiles, which is not <laughs> not common. <laughs> yes, uh, and it certainly fulfilled your obligation to your dead lover who, who <laughs> whose death you place at Una's feet. Um, but, you know, there's two stress left because it's never enough, Juliet. It's no. just never enough. Uh, and now, Chuck, if Chuck would like to... Yeah, who uh, are you sending our way? Is is there going to be a new character? Yeah, of course. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> so I feel like that's we should know that before. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Why don't we find out who it is and then we can figure out how to weave them into the game? Does that sound uh, amicable to everybody? Does that sound yeah, great? Absolutely. Uh -huh. Okay, so let me bring up a new character, and let me can be edit can be edited and controlled by Ross Bryant. Josephine, <laughs> everybody can kind of look at this <laughs> character. Okay. And, uh, oh, it, ga it gave it a weird name. Uh, I don't know why. I, I, I think it automatically populates the name and has called this character Ekaprag Wody. Well, <laughs> uh, that's quite a name. You can name this character whatever you like, but for now. <laughs> Wait, I don't see this. Where, where is it? Where's yeah, where is <laughs> Oh, show to, show to everyone. There can it is. Amazing. 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 Maybe you keep that name or maybe Hold you on. change it. Was that just like pure gibberish? Why did that happen? I think that the uh, Blades in the Dark Roll20 just sometimes gives it a name, and I forgot to just call it Ross's character so, number two. So that's it a, is that's just a, so funny. It's a Roll20. Here, wait, I can edit it. I wonder if I can name. I can edit the name. Yeah, I can. I'm going to call it Ross's character two. Ekaprag. <laughs> He's called Ekaprag Wody. <laughs> and maybe you'll choose to keep the name Ekaprag Wody. <laughs> Now, uh, let's uh, let's start by uh, giving this character a name. And remember, Ekaprag Wody is a possibility. It is on the table. <laughs> um, I mean, I feel like I feel like I don't choose this name as much as this name shows us. Let's, um, why would I? Why would I not do Ekaprag Wody? Ekaprag Wody. <laughs> Uh, so strange. I mean, like it's it's not even it doesn't even sound like a Blades in the Dark name. It no, sounds, it sounds like, like a captcha. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he is uh, Ekaprag Wody. Uh, he has some Tykerosi blood. He was part of a family of traveling carnies. He eventually settled down as an underworld type in a Grand Guignol theater here in uh, Duskfall, uh, bilking patrons 
theater patrons out of their money, uh, finding marks and taking advantage of them. Um, and, uh, Oh, yes. Could, may I, I assume, I feel like this is the type of theater that perhaps, uh, perhaps Ophelia and Juliet had, had gone to enjoy in the past had perhaps been marks, you know, had lost mm-hmm. money going and perhaps we always knew that we would lose money going, but we always enjoyed the show. And I feel like that might be a, a, a good connection to Edgar mm-hmm. Prag now in the position that Juliet is in now of someone that would be a good contact to bring in. Uh, I think so too. Our- that sounds perfect. Great. Um, so you were so you-, you were a regular. Mm-hmm. Yeah, was. Yeah, haven't mm-hmm. been back alone though. So let's let's do. A- Sure. Well, perhaps that is that is in seeking out Ekaprag because I know someone who is always able to to acquire mm-hmm. money every time that we visited. Um, and um, I don't know. Maybe an invitation goes out to Ekaprag to come to our to to meet us somewhere. Mm-hmm. Essentially, um, you've just been with, like, "Here, Ross, <laughs> you come up with the hook." With a business, <laughs> yes, with a business opportunity. Right. Uh, yeah. So where where do you where do you invite them? Um, let's go to T. Valkos, are you coming? I'm currently kind of finding out some more information on Flint. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So I'll invite Ekaprag to T. Great. And besides, if I go to T with you guys, I I don't, I think I'll stand out like a sore thumb, just this big hunch guy just on the table. Like... (laughs) Well, let's 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 actually let's set up that T, but let's go ahead and follow Valkos briefly. Your next score, but you have house. created an enemy. <laughs> Meanwhile, in a tea house, <laughs> not too far away, let's meet uh, Ekaprag. Ah, Ekaprag, I am so glad you could come. Well, if it isn't Juliet Bell Rose, so Bona Tavada. Oh. oh my god! I'm in love. Look at okay. your pretty little leak. It's been far too long it since you has. came around my way. Looking a bit less tear streaked than I saw you last time, darling. Yes, sir. Some time has passed indeed, and uh, you know it fills me with some warmth to see you again. Uh, good memories associated. I do remember, though, each time we would visit, our pocketbooks always were a little uh, less full when we left. Don't I, I, hmm. There's no, no uh, grudge upon it. Look, Rather... You, you know what they say about my place of business. You can lose all your money in there, darling, but you always leave with a smile. <laughs> <laughs> Too true. Seems and to me you've been smiling quite a bit less lately. My condolences, by the way. Thank you. Yes. Where have you been hiding yourself? I've been uh, doing business with a crew of sorts. That's why I called you, actually. Would you um, be interested, perhaps, in working together in a more, even more nefarious way? Even more nefarious? Now you have the attention of Eka Prag Wody, my dear. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> You asked enough. I've got a bone, a little job for you. Or do you have? S- well, um, Mr. Wardy. Well, uh, oh, do you have any limits per se? Is there anything that you? Is there a line you would not cross? Now you sound like one of my clients, darling. (laughs) (laughs) Let's say I like to push against the limits, Juliet Bellrose. I expected no less. 
Well, we have several prospects ahead of us. Some of them involve uh, the elimination of certain people. Well, that's but very I, dangerous talk, isn't it? It is. It is. I uh, would want to make sure that we got the most that we could get out of that situation. And I know that you would be the one to help us make sure that we did. Intriguing. Uh, I would love for you to come back with me and meet my crew, if you would be so obliging. If you've got the money, then I've got the time. Well, the money depends on the job well done, so to speak. But this one seems like it will prove um, to be <coughs> quite valuable, indeed. Oh. Well, I suppose we'll just see that it is then. And uh, an Ekapragwodi will follow you to the <laughs> to the grotto, and. Um, but perhaps you should exchange notes with Valkos, who has yeah. had his own adventure. Yeah, I'm like, you can just see me pulling, like, glass out of my knuckles. <laughs> just. That's a first impression right there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Valkos, uh, our latest uh, addition to the crew. Oh, we've met. You've been around the club the past couple weeks. I have. Really? You should know. You spent the evening with me, darling. I have. Voice was a bit different, though. It didn't have as much, uh... As many pretty boner gems in your... In your lamas there. Valkos. Mm. Yes. Well, hello. My name's Valkos. What's your name? The name's Ekaprag Wodi, my dear. And tell me, Ekaprag Wodi, was I screaming your name or were you screaming mine? Oh, trust me, Valkos. There was a lot of screaming, but... Not all of it, or most of it, was, shall we say, articulate. Mm. I like him. <laughs> yeah. The feeling's mutual, darling. More than mutual. Lovely place you've got here. And... <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm just, I'm just like looking Actually, around the just grotto. standing between this, like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> and lovely company. Like, so lovely company. Standing, looking over in the corner, just, just like a skeleton like, man who's what? like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. This is the part where we tell Ross Bryant that he has to now have a conversation with himself. <laughs> mm -hmm. <Look>. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> And then, no. yeah, from the shadows, he's like, Is Miss Bill Rose brought us then an opportunity? <laughs> like, um, oh, is that what she's brought then? <laughs> well, I brought you something, but, uh, is this the, uh, is this the crew that's gonna get it done then? If this is the crew, uh, this one, he should rest. This is where you come in to help us. Uh, Valko says you are familiar, it sounds like, is very able-bodied and capable in the fighting arts. Mm. Speaking uh, of uh, fighting. Um, yes, where, what happened? I play, I paid a visit to Flint. What? Um, yes, uh, I tried to procure more information. How did it go? Well, I got information, but he's also, let's just say, he knows that we're after him. Oh, God, God, Varko, every time. Hey, 
It worked. <laughs> Great. Then we, under then we understand each other. It's like just like a gentle hand on your hand, kind of looking, looking around. Right. Um, <laughs> Juliet is going to approach Ikaprag and sort of flick the hand off of mm. Balcos's say you will not do your work over my crew we work together you do not work to swindle us is that understood oh yeah yeah I've got a fix yeah. baby there, there it is, is. alright so, you just see, I mean, uh, you explain it to me. You describe it to so me, Valkos. I simply just look around um, and then I kind of just almost uh, open my rage essence vial. But I, instead of, you know, drinking it, I take a small whiff. And then I put my hands on the bars and I'm able to just pry it open. And kind of enough for, you know, enough for them to go through as I let go calm myself down and time to get in. It never stops being impressive. <sighs> oh, yeah. That's most impressive to have a front row seat to... <laughs> well... <laughs> and then as I, I walk, walk, slip through this gap, it's like, you just rest those muscles then. As I, I slip Be through the careful. bars and... Careful. Um, I would like to indulge my vice, just bring that stress down a little bit. Very good. So let's describe how are you fulfilling the obligation to your dead lover, Ophelia? So, um, you know, we needed that money. We went and did that momentarily, but um, she's still stuck on the fact that she saw Ophelia at the park. Oh, right. Yeah. And your last score. Yes. Um... And so I think she's going to go searching for her. But I, I think that we've reached the point where, like, the grief is almost turning into more anger, especially having it unlocked within her by that now, demon. Now, did she know that when she saw Ophelia that that was a demon that was sort of manipulating her? I don't think so. In my mind, she does not. She was not present for what happened afterwards. In yeah. her mind, she was with Ophelia in that moment in those okay. moments. Um, so I think she's going to go to, was it Miss Shore? Miss Shore Park. Park, yeah. And is just going to go searching for her all day long and, and maybe she digs at the dirt and it, so it gets angry and the more that she cannot find her, the angrier she gets and maybe she's um, striking things down. I'm not sure what, what is populated at Miss Shore Park, but maybe there's some destruction in the process, some wrecking. Uh... Great. Um, she goes, you know, through the tunnel. She searches everywhere, and when she is unable to find Ophelia, she starts to get violent. And uh, and um, I mean, I don't know how you damage a park. I think that I think that you probably take down a tree or something. I could set some things on fire. Yeah. Oh, now we're talking. <laughs> uh, that's going to relieve some stress. How far I go and. Excellent. Um, but I think I think it certainly ends with her, you know, perhaps sitting in the dirt, watching this tree burn in front of her. Yeah. Okay. Great. Only two. The fire isn't enough. You know, leeches uh, are specialized in tinker and wreck, and I think that the wrecking part of you isn't satisfied. Mm -hmm. You have to scour this city. You have to rip it to pieces if you want to find Ophelia. She's yeah. there somewhere. She's not dead. Mm -hmm. She's there somewhere. <sighs> what now, Widow? Uh, uh, will you continue to indulge your obligation to Ophelia, or will you do something else? Um, I'm going to do something else. I think I'm going to work on a long-term project. Excellent. Is this a new one? No, this is the... I'm going to work on the Summon Ophelia... Yeah, Celiac's that would make project. sense. You go mm -hmm. out and you try, you know, yeah. you try to like find her and you can't find her and you're like, no, I have to keep, you know, trying the ritual that will summon her. Um, mm -hmm. And so uh, let's see, a long-term project. Um, right. And uh, what action are you using? Because 
I believe that uh, Selyak kind of helps you do this, Selyak Khan, but- I think Selyak's leading it for sure, because actually summoning a, a spirit is more his purview, but um, I think that I, I will do what I can in, um, do you think that, is there, do you think there's like um, a sort of ritual site that, that Selyak has started sort of? Yes. Um, building up? In, in the grotto or elsewhere? I don't know. Where 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 do you think Selyak would have? Um, the grotto seems like a safe place yeah. where there's like easy to control, and we've already described some like yes. arrays that he's that he's okay. created of like like he had that sort of like magic circle of her mm-hmm. name spread out all over, and yeah, yeah. I think he, it's now like over time it's increasingly become more shrine like, and um, yeah, and you can see him now maybe like kind of tranced out like both hands like. <laughs> automatic writing like the name backwards and forwards on pieces of papers he's like meditating um yeah okay and but yeah so he's he, there's definitely a a space a where he's space. trying to amplify the call so i think that what um uh, uh juliet would be doing is tinkering with some of the things that are there she takes out the handkerchief that she had kept that was soaked with her tears while she was grieving through the streets for Ophelia and um, tries to, I think it's like extracting the essence of that grief. So she's treating this like she would any piece of technology, you know, even though it's an arcane technology, she is trying to different uh, combinations of objects, different combinations of emotions connected mm-hmm. to Ophelia. What is the right formula? What is going mm-hmm. to work? Uh, and so I will allow that. That's a very interesting interpretation uh, that allows you to use your best uh, action score. Uh, I'm aware. <laughs> I'm aware. And uh, why don't you go ahead and roll that action? You have one pie piece missing from your eight segment summon Ophelia clock yeah. currently. Can, can, can Celiac assi- like we we spoke earlier about like downtime activities being done in tandem. Can this be also his? Can we do this uh, kind oh of yeah, like Celiac hasn't together? done his first time. Huh? Yeah, Celiac can also do a downtime activity and work on I don't see why you can't both work on the same project. Yeah, if you're making this like uh, the distillment lacrimosa mm-hmm. to, 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 to distill the grief itself that still resides in an etheric form within the tears uh, and yeah, we, we're, you were trying to like almost alchemically separate out this this uh, the pneuma yes. within this uh, yes Celiac I must see her I must see her you don't understand mm-hmm. I must <laughs> And she's like almost gripping Celiac at this point with the like handkerchief in his hand and like desperately looking for this to happen. Right. Uh, what should the position be here? Um, we're gonna call it controlled mm-hmm. uh, and standard. This is a. Okay. This yeah, is really yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There's a five in there. There's a five. Okay. And am I also rolling? Oh, yeah. I yes, you to. may as well. But let's let's deal with Juliet oh, first. So you get two segments, Juliet, yourself. Ooh. Ooh. Um, that's really exciting. Okay. okay. Right? That is exciting. Two segments. Yeah. So um, I'll go ahead and take two more segments off. And now, Selyuk, it's your turn to shine, buddy. You're helping with this. Yes. Um... So yeah, if we're we're now kind of like doing this this yeah. In, in theory, alchemy. it is possible to summon Ophelia this time. In theory, it is possible for this to happen this time. What? If because we Celia the... gets a critical. Oh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have a qu- before we start. Perhaps I have a question about stress because I set the last one out. Am I cleared? Oh, yeah. You're cleared. Oh. Great. And this is a. Uh, no pun intended, because it is as though his flesh has been rinsed clean by pure rainwater, and the, the <laughs> everything underneath is standing out in in stark relief every time he passes beside a light. Um, uh, I'm I going think, to I attune. Think, I think the widow drops like to her knees before you and says, "You you did it before. You did it before." Celia, you did it at the park. Just do it again. Bring her back for me. 
Beautiful. And and like holding up this this let's say like a little a little pan with a a dollop of this distillment in it. It's like just focus on that etheric force. The feeling in you that desires, the anarchic spark that is within you. It calls to her, it weeps for her, the part of you that is her, where she reached into you. But there is still a part of her in you. That is the part that we shall amplify and call. And uh, I... I just like to imagine Valko sitting nearby <laughs> eating chips. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Literally, like... Right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely, because Valko's has to be nearby at the mm-hmm. ready just in case, yeah. right? Like, <laughs> I feel, and, and I think like maybe uh, uh, Ekaprag is like lifts up a corner of a sleep mask and is like, mm-hmm, and goes back. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I guess roll, let's roll a tune, baby. Let's roll a tune. Okay, come on. What's what's going on? Come on. All right. Uh, that's a standard or controlled rather. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Make the thing do the thing. The thing uh, does it. No critical. No, no critical, I'm afraid. So with a four as your highest roll, you get two more segments. Oh, we're very close to summoning Ophelia, everybody. How many pie He's pieces sitting. remain? Um, there will be three. three pie pieces remaining. Um, Juliet, like, pushes you away, angry. <laughs> like, ugh, why not? Why isn't she here? This stuff like that, that spills on the floor. Right, I think I think candles are falling over. Like Juliet is in a rage, right? Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where is she? You did it. You did it when I was not ready. And now you cannot do it now that I'm here. I need to see her. Mm. Yes, the melancholic element in you is combining with Calor. <sighs> Forgive me. She's still very distant. But the force of, of your distillment still calls to her. Continue to meditate on upon her. It time moves differently for her. She may already be answering, though we cannot hear. <sighs> Fine. Forgive me. Forgive me. Mm. And I... I'm sorry. I did not mean to <clears throat> take that out on you, Celiac. Thank you for... Thank you for helping me. I just fear that she is slipping away from me. And I'm going to spend my extra coin to yeah. work on the downtime. And uh, on the downtime, on the sorry, not the downtime, on the on the group activity. Oh yeah, oh, I, yeah. And I think like I'm gonna use that coin. I'm almost gonna. It's like offering this coin to summon Ophelia. Oh. Mm. Uh, oh, well, that gains you the extra downtime activity, and you're going to work on the long-term project. Yeah. And basically, I think what you're going to do. Uh, let me see. Can I can I pitch something to you, Abu? Go on, please. I think that. The coin just gives you the extra time, the extra activity. I think you bring some of this ectoplasm home inside of you and you belch it into the sacred ritual <laughs> circle that they have prepared for you. <laughs> Maybe there's a fragment of Ophelia inside you. Who knows? Mm. And I think it would be a tune. I'd be rolling my tune. I think that makes sense. Roll your mm. tune and let's see if you're able to clear this downtime activity. Oh my God. Oh my God. God. Yes. <laughs> what did you roll? A six. A six, A six what does means it mean? three segments. No. Valkos comes back to the lair, <laughs> vomits up ectoplasm that begins to, I mean, the ritual circle has been desecrated. The, the candles have been knocked mm-hmm. over. Uh, a lot of the items are in disarray, but when Valkos uh, exhales these vapors into the circle, suddenly they begin to form and a female body is slowly 
building itself from the items in the circle. Like uh, part of its arm is being held on with a loose handkerchief. A necklace she used to wear is sort of like holding up the like the head. Like it's it's Ophelia, but it's like she's not quite complete. She's she's holding herself together with these objects, and she says, Julian. <sighs> what are you? I'm gonna rush towards her. And what happens when you actually? Embrace her? Is it just, like, no, what goes through, like, do you go straight through a ghost? What does it feel like? And you try to um, hold on to a well, spirit. Well, you, you, uh, you grab, you grab her and you can feel these items kind of coming apart in your hands. Like, her dress is kind of, there's not really anything inside of it. Uh, and she, but there is a feeling, you know, uh, the feeling you get when you're in a room and you know you're not alone. The feeling you get when you suddenly realize someone is behind you. There is a human presence here, although faint, uh, and you can hear her whispering in your ears, I've come back to you, my love. Ophelia. Ophelia. <sighs> is, 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 I mean, is the, t is the here? Are you, are you seeing this? Uh-huh. I think... Yeah, uh... Yeah, I assume so. <clears throat> yeah, I think I'm, I was probably doing some sort of ritual to try to reset up this space <laughs> when you just kind of burst in, and it might have been like a, no, you wait, you fool! And, and then this begins to happen. It's like... <gasps> and I'm just kind of, like, observing, and, uh... Ophelia, Ophelia, I've missed you so, so much. You must tell me. You must tell me what happened. I have to know. You know what happened, my love. They did not want you to succeed. Your formula would have meant the end of the Leviathan trade. You know. <gasps> the Sparkrites did this to me. Look at me. And she raises oh. her hand and it's in pieces and she takes off a part of her face and holds a piece of squirming <gasps> ectoplasm in her hand. No, stop, 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 do not do this. We, we can, we can keep you here, right? We can keep her here, right? It is. I, I feel drawn away. No. The path of echoes. No. I wish to walk it. To learn its inner mysteries. Why? Why have you brought me back? Why? Because I need you, Ophelia. I need you. I've, I've been lost. I've, I've, I've felt so much anger for what happened. You were taking God, her away from me. You should feel anger. <sighs> Why have you not stopped them? Why have I'm you not trying. punished them for I'm what they have done? I'm trying. Like things in the room when she screams are like just <laughs> falling off yeah. the tables and stuff. As I'm like kind of holding onto the wall. I will get them. I will get them, Ophelia. I promise you that they will feel all of the rage between us both. Do not be weak in this, Juliet. I know you. You want to believe the best of people. You want to believe that there is still hope. The only meaning is what we make. Hurt them. I will help you. Yes. While I'm still here. We can do this together. Yes. <sighs> and she kisses you. Oh my God. And it's cold. And I'm kind of watching this, like, like what the, f like I'm like on all fours, like. <laughs> 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 yeah, I kiss her back. However, I can. Yes. Um, it's cold. It's not the same. Uh, sure. Yeah. Mm. It does not feel like you. Mm. It is only a piece of me. Ophelia looks at Valkos. And back and back to Ophelia. 
If you try to... Uh, if you try to inhabit another body... <laughs> you know that this one is a willing vessel. <laughs> she moves you towards see me starting to, I'm starting to panic and I'm like... Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, you said... You said Vargos. I've already, I've already attuned to your form. I look to Theriac and I'm just like, this spirit is very fragile. What does that mean? The, the membrane between Alco's soul and the many, the legions that have been walking through, around, passing through him. I believe Velkos knows even now that he undertakes this at great peril to his own soul. If you give me time. I'll do it. (laughs) What? The spirit of Ophelia looks to you and her eyes go wide. Oh, did you not hear me, love? What, you think this is the first time I've... had to... <laughs> been... been round the back of the grave, so to speak? What? <laughs> She's... And I've had a, the, the old epigraph chisel on it. Oh, I'm sorry, too, too good for a ride on Eka Pragwody. No, just throwing and my hat Ophelia in. should recognize him, actually. Um, Didn't we establish I've that we both him. went to your shows? Yes, this may work. We already have a connection. It's Miss Ophelia. <laughs> Mr. Wordy. Yes. And she breathes her cold breath on you, and she puts her very weak hand on your shoulder and really it's just an empty glove one of the things that was thrown into the ritual circle (laughs) yes she turns back and looks at you Juliet shall we try and you can tell in his eyes like like hyper hyper confident Edgar Bragg is like second thoughts like (laughs) (laughs) mind that love you lovers are like ice (laughs) Yes, Ophelia, your your anger should flow freely and more concretely. Go. I'll be looking at you through his eyes, my love. I'll be touching you with his flesh. I'll see you on the other side of Ekebrag <laughs> Anything for adventure. Oh! And you just see it like, oh, and you're like goose bumps. And he's like, so, 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 too cold. It's too cold. I don't know if I can. My love. <laughs> Did it work? And like, like a, like a marionette, like standing up, like not used to being in a body, like knocking things over like uh, it's okay you'll you might. get used to it and Juliet holds her it's just tight. like yeah jerkily and then like settling down is like it's like running running as, as Eka Prague slash Ophelia is like running their fingers through your like through your hair and like so Celiac is just kind of like Looking over the Valkos, like perhaps some privacy is in order. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think whoever's on the other side, as she's hugging Echo Prague, Ophelia, I think sees a moment of Did I make the right choice? Is this a good idea? And and it's this moment of like I don't know if I like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you just hear like, you have to destroy them. Burn them. Raise them to the ground, my love. 
shatter their bones for me. Do it for me. Oh yes. my god. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. And, uh, uh, yeah, on that privacy note, um, <laughs> Juliette, do we have, like, is this just one big room in our, is our grotto just one? <laughs> yeah, there's just, a bead, there's just a bead curtain. Sorry. It's just no, a, you know, it's, it's interesting. No. You know, we could get into the rules about how many people can live here. It's actually, oh, yeah. according to the, according to the game, only a certain amount of people can live here, and not all of you, I believe. Um, I, I'm not going to look at the exact has his own rule place. right now. Echobreg has his own place. So does Chuck, obviously. Um, yeah. Look, let's just say that uh, there is a private area, of course. And um, Juliet sort of like leads Ophelia that way, and as Ophelia is Echobreg, Ophelia, Echolia? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, Akphelia? Akphelia Um, goes in, uh, Juliet just sort of looks at, at their form and is just kind of like, and blindfolds herself, wraps (laughs) some fabric around her eyes and follows her in. And I can tell you that with the blindfold on, you can't tell the difference. It feels like... It feels mm-hmm. like Ophelia. In fact, in fact, maybe this blindfold is not a blindfold, and what <laughs> what is thrust into your hand by uh, by Celia Khan is a chainmail mask. Oh, oh. That when you put his fine uh, fine spirit mask on, the face of Eka Pragwodi just like falls away, and it's and, and you are looking at that sort of etheric. Oh shit! Ophelia. Yes. Roll of sex is and right. I think Celia goes over to Valkos and like. You have been a worthy vessel. You have achieved what I could not with 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 so much preparation. And I just grab you <laughs> by your by your by your throat, and I'm like, we have done wrong. And I let go, and I just walk out of the grotto. Oh no! I think for ne- from now on. Ekaprag, for all intents and purposes, is a gestalt being with Ophelia. Okay? <laughs> so that means that Ophelia now gets a downtime activity. <laughs> what? Oh my gosh. <laughs> maybe the most public facing one involved. So maybe Project is like, not just like wreck her reputation to the extent that we did, but destroy completely Unifero's. And okay. if I would characterize Ophelia in difference to Juliet, it would be that, you know, she when she said that he she had similarities with Valkos, it was just that she where Juliet needs to plan and needs to calculate, needs to know all the answers, Ophelia would just jump in without necessarily knowing it's going to work. We'll do oh, maybe man. the less uh tactical, like just go in guns blazing type of approach more, to anything. More reckless. Mm-hmm. Yes. A lot more reckless. One can get well, lost. In. Um, <laughs> look, I don't know if I have anything that's information gathering specific. Uh, I, I want to. Could she just uh, go talk to Valkos? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. Later. <clears throat> and uh, walks over at some point. I don't know. In the grotto. And, and... Ekphelia is not there. And it's <laughs> still in the room, I assume. <laughs> Somewhere. Separate room. <clears throat> Balkos. Could I ask you a question? Yes. You have let spirits ride you, so to speak. (laughs) When you did so, did they feel happy? Did they feel more than one thing? I told you 
being led by grief, it brings suffering and pain. You know, I have seen many spirits, played with many spirits, fought with many spirits. Your spirit. There's something about that spirit that feels Listen, we've had a lot of fun together. <clears throat> I want you to know this. If anything were to happen to you, I would be there for you, no matter who they are. Even if Your other half were to come for you. I've seen what they can do to people. When they pass, they are not the same. <laughs> you have let grief lead you here. I fear. I fear that you may be correct, but I hope that you are not. Hope. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. She is so. She is so angry. All I feel is. Anger, even, even now that we are together, I don't understand. Then you should ask yourself the question, why is she angry? Is she angry that she has, was taken away prematurely or she was brought back? Right. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Argos for being here. I mean what I said. If any harm comes to you, I'll be there. Thank you. Mm. Speaking of, I uh, I feel similarly for you, Valkos. And I worry I worry for what happened just recently. Those that attacked you. Mm. Was that from... What is it? Fl Flint's men? Yes. Yes. Because of the altercation? Because of... Hey. Mm. I worry I this it. is... Listen, listen. I had it coming. I was reckless. I was stupid, I was foolish. I was led by pride, led by stupidity. But, don't worry. I have a plan. You do? Mm. Should we aid you in this plan, perhaps? Maybe. It'll be dangerous, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, ah, uh, what a new concept. Mm. <laughs> Well, whatever it takes, I'm in. And I know the place pretty well, so... <laughs> we could say, uh, it'll be a lot easier than just... breaking and entering. <laughs> um, I want to spend my coin to start another long-term project. Oh my gosh, this is the, this is the episode <laughs> of long-term projects. I'm going to call this episode long-term project Orama. Okay. Um, <laughs> that was got a lovely ring to it. Yes. Okay, great. Um, great. Um, what is the long-term project? I'm going to do like a classic, like leech thing here. And I want to start crafting, uh, an invention of sorts. Mm. Um, okay. 
I'd like to start working on a set of three rings that can be attuned to the users and uh, would inform one another when one is in danger or is close to huh. death. Um, wow. Uh, I, I know this is like just coming out of <laughs> nowhere. That's awesome. I love yeah. it. Okay. Okay. I just I want to I want us to have. <clears throat> I don't know. I just thought it would be fun. Uh, something that sort of like it has a stone that changes colors with what's happening to each of us. I love it, and I think that you know that is that's not OP to me. That's like just smart. So I'm gonna make it only a eight segment clock. <laughs> okay. Um, I, uh, what pr I think it's just about, yeah, sort of... Do you have a name for this invention? Hmm. Hmm. Um, let's call them, um, heartbeat rings. Great. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. That's what? perfect. <laughs> what yeah, that was good. Oh. <laughs> I, I, like, yeah. no, I was like, oh. I was like, that was, that was like, okay. hmm. Be right. They monitor nice. each other's heartbeat. That's really insanely. Yeah. I think that's like. Cool. I think that's um, and that's really good of the time as well. It's great. You can kind of, <laughs> yeah. You can um, feel it like it, aware it, like of it. Yeah. Mm. yeah. It's great. It's like they're like you feel each other's. Hand. Yeah. So. Um, tinker. So tinker. Mm -hmm. And like maybe as you're hunched over your table, just like crushing it, like in the zone with this, you just you just feel a presence behind you. It's like making someone a present there, darling. Oh, oh my god. Don't want to see. Everybody's got to have their secrets, right? Ekapreg, <laughs> is that you? And it's always. But. And then you just see like a little like. Oh no. But, oh god, this is. Of course. You just put a hand on your shoulder. Take the time to do whatever it is you think you. You think best. <laughs> yes, as always. Our plan is in motion. <sighs> she just buries herself into her work, <laughs> kind of. Uh... <laughs> she buries herself in her work with great success. Yeah. Uh, you have a chance of finishing this invention in your next downtime. But for now, you must tell me. What is the next score you're all going to take on? Mm -hmm. Kill Flint. Yes. I vote Kill Flint. Everyone is in agreement. He's been too Sorry, active is for that, too is long. that fine? Mm -hmm. yes. No, no, no. We've had, we've had him our crosshairs for a while. Yeah. Take some turf. Um, I think that Ophelia, when she learns of this, is upset. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, Ekaprag can probably control her, fight with her, mm -hmm. but Ophelia... Wants to go after the spark rights mm -hmm. always and only. Great. Um, uh, and then from within the vault, you hear. <laughs> and something black starts to ooze out of the crack of the uh, almost open door. Do I know what uh, this is? It is Especially. some kind of. It's something old. Yeah. It's something old and dead. Mm -hmm. That he has been keeping under his house. It's like an entity that is dwelled here a very long time. A remnant of an older world. And, uh, um. Shit. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh I think Juliet will follow Valkos because I think she's scared. Part of the yeah. uh, dementia happening of all this, like. Liquid has come out and is forming in front of Celiac, and she's. Just, no, no, Am no. I really seeing this? Yeah. I don't want to be in the darkness. I don't want to be trapped here. Valkos, wait! I'll just like run after. Her. Yeah. And I can tell you that um, it's almost like this thing is awaiting your instruction, Celiac. So what are you telling oh, it to man. do? <clears throat> you are an anarchic spirit. You flow into a vessel for a time. You have your moment. And then you depart. All things in this world rise and fall. All too briefly, but there is an essence which lasts forever. And that is what you are. 
You were not meant to be enclosed forever in so small a space. And he who oppressed you, confined you, held you in burden to bear his hateful yoke for far too long, even now seeks to elude your sacred judgment. Your vengeance is at hand. We are not your confiners. We are your instruments. <laughs> Seek <laughs> your revenge. And I sick this thing on him. So this weird mandala of like black oil that is floating in front of you suddenly turns into like, uh, you know, 50 little missiles, like little pointed blades uh, uh, made of black oil and starts to float uh, down the hallway toward where Flint ran. And now we come to Valkos who has given chase and Valkos Flint falls to the ground. And as he does so, he rolls over and he's got an enormous pistol pointed right at your face. Great. Flint is about to fire into you. This is uh, something that is going to put a hole in your torso because you are close enough that it would be point blank range. Valkos, what do you do? I'm going to use my armor, Mm -hmm. essentially, which I have. Oh, yeah. And I'm ready for that. So I've got my armor and I have a pistol too as well, which I'm going to use for my final uh, load. And I am going to just boom, pull that trigger as well at the same time. Okay, what action are you rolling? Finesse. Are are these simultaneous? Like our actions happening? Is it like a... If you would like for something to happen right now, it certainly can. Would it be skirmish? I think it'd be skirmish, right? You could, you could, I would allow skirmish to happen. It's point blank range. You guys are kind of getting close and firing. Yeah, I would allow skirmish. And in fact, I'm not, can I take my pistol back and just use my, my signature blade, my little dagger blade that I'm going to my Severosi <laughs> blade instead? You may retcon back to your blade. Yes. Brilliant. Yes. Okay. And Juliet, it sounded like you wanted something, you wanted to do yes. something in this moment. Yes, I see them both <clears throat> pointing about to shoot each other. Can I use a, my blowgun and darts? and shoot a dart with standstill poison towards uh, Flint, which will paralyze him. Yes, you may. Yes, you may. Um, Both of you can roll your actions right now. Fuck. Oh, Wow, I, so uh, Valko just rolled a two, one, and a two. So that means that a bullet, uh, a ball. Wait, 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 wait. Is firing, uh, is maybe about to fire toward him, but let's see how Juliet does. Oh, you genius. Juliet rolls a six. Six. So <clears throat> the finger goes tight on the trigger. Your knife goes wide. You you don't get you don't get in close enough or or maybe you throw it and it misses his head. His finger starts to tighten on the trigger and suddenly thunk, a dart goes into his neck and he freezes there. His face in a rictus. Veins popping out on his head. He's not able to pull the trigger any farther. <sighs> And that is when suddenly, weaving between you come these <gasps> strands of dark fluid, and they <laughs> arrive at Flint, and he's not even able to scream. His vocal cords are completely paralyzed as these tiny fingers of black fluid start to dissect him. <laughs> it rips off a square of forehead. It disconnects part of his jaw. One uh, and two go into his eyeball and start to hollow and drill it out. And you watch as this spirit takes apart his flesh like he's a machine, unscrewing bones, uh, disconnecting facial features. And soon he is unraveling before your very eyes. It is completely horrific. And it is so horrific, in fact, that you are uh, in danger of taking a, a, a fear harm from this, from witnessing this. It is so awful that your sanity is in danger. Do you understand? Your very oh, mind he- might be shattered by seeing this. I think Juliet, who's already dealing with the uh, dementia. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be uh, harder for her, I'll tell you is that. Is going to leap at Valkos and like 
hold him and like desperately like maybe she's at his feet and is holding on his ankles like don't leave me don't leave me please 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 oh you must get me out of here i cannot be left in the darkness i cannot do not let the darkness go <gasps> me please Marcos, Marcos, Marcos. uh valcos if you get a if you get a six you can take her with you if okay. you don't you can't oh my god so what is the position the position is, I think this is desperate. Oh, okay. And it will have the standard effect that you will get back to the door and be able to shut it. And, oh, and just please. so I'm, I'm gone clear, the door is the door. The vault? <laughs> Where the fuck is the vault? vault? Is yeah, the sorry, door? The, the vault. <laughs> Great. Just and, uh, sure. and, and Celiac, if you want to intervene, you certainly can try as because well. Because I now have some, some portion of whatever this thing is levitating in front of me. That's correct. Um, okay. <laughs> Celiac, let's find out what happens with this role, and then maybe you can you yeah. can do what you you would do in this Obviously, situation. Mm -hmm. Juliet, please. I, okay, I muster some courage, and I trust trust my die roll. <laughs> That's a one. Oh, oh my God. God! That is just a one. Okay. Um, uh, uh -oh. You are going to take a level two harm. Uh, and we're just gonna call it uh, panicked. Oh my god! And uh, so is Juliet. You're gonna take it too because you oh, just said there. So you're gonna take a level great. two harm called panicked. Okay, that's fine. We've Flint made it. Flint is dead. Flint is dead. Falcos, we have to go. We have to get out of here. No, because it's, it's a message. It's a. It's a. We need to. We need to. And I just sort of. Oh, no, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna. I don't know what to do. I think. I'm, I think I am in this sort of weird, crazy state at the moment of trying can to relay this message. Trust Celiac anymore? Did you see what that thing does? It was just about to cut us up, and it even took a chunk of him. Tendrils yes. of black ooze start to appear in the floor. Mm -hmm. Okay, we need to get oh, the fuck no, out. No, no, All right, no, cool. No, no. I, I kind of see. Yeah, that that makes me book it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Enough to make me like scream and leave. Um. At do you want a flashback, Valkos? But I'm going to tell you what the flashback is. Go on. What, just, all right, before I accept it, go on. Uh, the flashback is you get the jar, but I'm going to tell you how you got it. Give it to You're me. You're going to take a trauma. Yes. Okay. <laughs> He's so, so happy. As Flint was being deconstructed by the builder... Falco saw that the jar holding Galena was actually on Flint's purse. But in order to get close, you had to reach into all the sharp little knives that were taking uh, Flint apart. And you had to reach out and grab the jar and it cut up your arm really badly. And now there are all these like uh, geometrical little cuts all over your arm and like this weird occultic design. And um, you, um, you take stress for that. I think you had one stress left. Yep. You take one more stress and you take a trauma. What trauma are you going to pick? I think it would be. I want to go almost like if I see this. Yeah. I think I'm going to be and I see the geometric shapes. I think I become obsessed. <gasps> and I start actually oh, looking at this no. and I'm like. Oh my god, this is... This is beautiful. Oh, no. And there's almost this love and a kind of like... I understand now. Yes. So I, I, think I can hear Celiac in, like, in my head and I can hear the voice and I'm just like... And it's almost as if like as well, like the panic state of me is like almost this other side of Valkos leaving his body as this new obsessive oh, no, self no. just almost takes over. So yeah. Insight and look at studying this, what this is and what it means. And I'm, you know, I'm asking Celiac, like, you know, these, <clears throat> these signs, they, they speak to me. What, what does it mean? Does it, does it, what does it mean? Um, and I'm looking at the mis well, miss some of these are familiar to me. In Tykeros, there are standing stones where I have seen images like these. I cannot decipher them completely, but I, I may know someone who can. And um, 
Can we? And I, I feel like maybe maybe Celiac takes Valkos to to like a to like some dark library or or like a subterranean like bookseller <laughs> that uh, you you by your own words said you were worshiping. That's that's right. Did uh, Celiac so- let Juliet come with to watch? Certainly. Um, th- I'm curious what you get up to. And um, that's all. I know that your your mind received a, a blow from your exposure to this this essence. How Are could you- it not? What you are experiencing is beyond the flesh's ability to contain. If you do not wish to lose your mind, you must open your mind. The holy men of Tychoros in ages gone by would drive a spike into the skull to trap in, to create a door into the flesh itself. Uh, we do this metaphorically, of course. And you can see that he's maybe only semi-serious. Um, like, of course. You must, you must trepanate your mind. You understand? Yes, I will do my very best. I would like to understand. I would like to understand. Then come. And, uh... Yes, yeah, so, so then I'd love... I've been going to these these little chapels of, of forgotten gods, but now I have exposure to a real ancient entity, so I'd like to call that up and have this faithful experience be with this being. The creature that you just encountered in the score, or the one... Correct. Okay. Uh, very good. So, the Builder. Uh, the Builder, yes. Um, so uh, you call up the Builder uh, through a cult ritual, and um, where do you do this? Do you do this in your grotto or somewhere else? This thing was underground and, and uh, confined and, di- and and suffering in darkness. So I want to be as in open a space as I can find um, ah. on the top of a building. Um, ah, very good. Um, and you are horrified when uh, it arrives and it does not climb up from below, but rather big spattering drops of black fluid rain down onto the top of the building <laughs> and start to form into a huge puddle that then starts to take on the complex geometric shapes that you know to be a part of the builder. And by the way, it's still holding some teeth and it's holding an eyeball right near the teeth. Uh, and it's got other little pieces of flint that it has saved and it is holding them in sort of the vague outline of where they would go on a body. Uh, And it says, have you brought me the hand? I need hands to work, to wield my weapons. I shall gather unto you many hands to work your business in the physical world. Have you brought her as an offering? And all of the little needles start to uh, weave their uh, little uh, trails around Juliet's <laughs> cool. head. This is, uh, need... this is to decrease my stress. Okay. I need a voice. A voice. Perhaps I should take hers. And uh, a needle starts to kind of just caress. Celiac? You have already given me this, your stigmata for my show of faith. It was like unwrapping this, uh, this um, cravat bandage. It's like, if you require a voice, then speak through me. And the needles leave Juliet and they float over to where they've already opened part of your neck and they stick into your neck. And the pain is 
exquisite. It is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It is so <gasps> pleasurable like, as uh, <clears throat> needle after needle penetrates your neck, and you can feel that um, actual flesh is being siphoned out of you. But the feeling uh, is of being. It's of merging with a godhead. And what I mean by that is for this time, you feel that you are one with its consciousness. You perceive the world as it does, and you are no longer bound by petty, fleshy, human concerns, Seliac. Mm -hmm. And so this is when you may roll for your vice. Fuck yes. Oh, oh no. no. And, uh, and, um, <laughs> yes, uh, um, Juliet, you're seeing just these, like, needles upon needles lancing through uh celiac and almost and in the way that like you'd see like those kind of like ritualistic suspensions like being drawn up oh off of God. it's bearing his own weight and i uh, yes here what we go fuck? <laughs> so i'm gonna roll so this is seems profoundly painful so i roll prowess the one with the least amount of pips or in that's right, right. mm-hmm and oh. I see that you have rolled a six, so you relieve oh. six stress. I two, thought three. it was the lowest. That's Four, five, six. fantastic. No, because you have two pips in prowess, right? Oh, good. That's good, right. Good. Um, so that's very good. So I think that because it's so good, like you see me, uh, Celiax, visage kind of goes slack and is like regarding you. <laughs> Celiac? We will need hands to be about our work. And like just bleeding hands covered with needles are reaching for you like... <sighs> the world is ours. Siliak, are you still in there? And she like gingerly take that hand and tries to sort of stir him. Siliak! Celiac, look at me. In. What is the difference between in and out? There is only through. <gasps> and uh, and just like Celiac passes out, and as this, <laughs> as he's in in religious ecstasy. <laughs> um, Juliet and, uh, just leaves. Oh, she does. Well, the thing is not finished, and <gasps> since Celiac has passed out. What? It moves to uh, block your path off of the building, uh, and it says, "Build me a church. Bring me more flesh." And then it rises up into the air, into the darkness above Duskfall. Fuck, Zediac. And maybe and I struggle at the doorway, and I just go back to grab him to take him back to the grotto. And. Yeah, yeah. and that is the perfect place to take a brief ad break. <sighs> yeah. And uh, I think I'm going to go find Valkos because I'm a little concerned about <laughs> okay. what I just saw. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's like carrying Celiac who's like passed out in the fervors of faith. Yeah. <clears throat> Valkos? <laughs> like we have a problem. Time. What, this, what happened? This, this, this demon that, that, that he's now, what, in servitude to? Is, is, has taken over Celiac. I don't even see Celiac anymore. What? What? What did it say? It, it, it said you need to build a church and, and... Must find its weapons and, and that it weapons. needed hands what? and hands. The hand that bears. What's wrong with you? This is uh, insane. Yes. Uh, insane. Saliak, where did you meet this um this demon again? How did you call it? At the top of the old tower. Less, less, less even than three blocks from here. Hmm. 
This was once a citadel of the old world. The very precipice of this tower. I showed it once more where it touched me. And it touched me again. And you can see, like, just pricks and, like, small, like, wounds all over him now. We are instruments. This is the paradox of the anarchic spirit that sometimes it is only through servitude that we can be free. What? Celiac. You, you were lost in that moment. You were not even here. There was no freedom in you. You were comp- a thrall. It's fine, Juliet. You'll be fine. He's simply recovering. We're all recovering. Yes. This thing will kill us all. And tell me, his obsession with this demon, what difference is it to your obsession with your loved one? Maybe it is no different, and maybe that's not good either. Hmm. But we will be fine. Have faith. I have faith. I look at the both of you and I see... Family. Friend. We have one another. And remember what I told you. I will not let harm come to you. And I kind of walk out and I look back and I'm like, you said the top of one of the sixth towers, right? You know, the Overcroids, the Overcross. Mm. I'll be back. I leave. <laughs> Valkos is going to go <laughs> indulge his vice, it sounds like. <laughs> um, but uh, Overcross is, is correct. Well, I need to indulge my vice, and God damn it, it's obligation to my deceased partner. Uh, yes, so I, it sounds like Ross Bryant's going to have to do some role-playing anyway, because <laughs> right. if you recall, your deceased lover is uh, currently in the body of your crew member, Ekaprag Wodi. Um, Juliet, how do you think that she would indulge this vice? It's so interesting. Um... You know, I think in this moment she is very confused by everything that just happened and we'll just go to Ophelia just and ask her. Uh, she'll she'll go to find her wherever. Is Ekapreg just... Is Ekphelia in the grotto? I think we said that... Ekphelia. Ekapreg mm-hmm. has his own place. I think he has like a little uh, Garrett, that's right. Garrett apartment. And it's really small, but like it's... It has like little... Like, it's nothing... Nothing fancy, but it's it's got like silky brocades and like yeah like third fourth hand tapestries and and plush couches and stuff. But when you go, he's just like staring out a window with his back to you. Um, Ophelia. Oh, it's her you want, is it? I'm sorry. I I, I need to see her. I need I need to see her. I need to speak to her. <sighs> it isn't Juliet Bell Rose. Wants to see. Wants to see a pretty Palomi. And I wouldn't want to see Yavka Prague Wody no more. I'm sorry, I could. Oh, God. <laughs> you should come back. I- Oh no, it's fine, darling. So bony to Vada. Pour yourself a glass, hmm? And uh and uh you can tell that he's been he's been drinking a little. And Juliet does. She goes and gets a glass and downs that. Oh yes, yeah. Mm. It's very good. And like gulps it and then sets sets the glass down really gently and suddenly it's like My love, 
What have you seen? These terrible, terrible things. I, I don't know what's happening to this, this home of mine. They're worshipping demons. Oh. The worst. Ophelia, demons are the wolves who wear the clothes of of people, as we both know, but don't worry, my love. Don't worry. We're moving ever closer for the moment where she will have her comeuppance. The wheels are already in motion. Don't worry. What? What wheels? What? Tell me what you want me to do. Tell me, and, and she it's like down on her knees at, at Ophelia's feet, like, just tell me what you want me to do. I will do anything, Ophelia. I don't know what to do anymore. Um. Just keep me with you. Okay. It's, it's, it is... It's difficult having to... It's so difficult having to... See you only briefly when, when I can force my way through, when he lets me. I just wish I could stay. Then come to me. Leave a Capra body behind. What? What? <laughs> what are you saying? That we can be together, like you say. We can be as one. Is this really what you desire? I don't know what I desire anymore. I don't know, Ophelia. The world is, is, it's crazy. I don't know what I just saw. All I know is that I love you. We can do these sorts of things in time. For now, we have each other. And... There's... And, and you can tell that she's very intrigued by this offer. Um, Would she like to try to transfer herself to Juliet's body. Um I think uh, actually actually no. Oh my god. She leans in really close <laughs> and she says you Don't want me in there with you. Juliet. Why? You don't know how you don't know what it's like in here. Feeling him always pressing against me, trying to push me out. He, even as much as he may accept it, there's something in him that rebels. But the more I stay, the more I luxuriate and stretch out in here, the more control I have. I wouldn't want to push you away or push you out. Let me stay here. I'm already making a home. And the longer I stay, I won't have to leave. Okay. You understand? Yes, yes. I understand. As long as I still have you, you just... You seem so different, Ophelia. I've been places and seen things just like you have. You're, you think that you haven't changed. Everything changes. Everything changes. Yes. I am doing my best not to let him see and hear what we are saying. Just kiss me before you go.
she kisses her, but it's like um, <clears throat> a little catatonic almost. And when she pulls away, like it's you see it fall away, and it's like I hope you had a good time. How long has it been? A week? Two hours? I gotta be honest with you, Julian. Do you know a way? Do you know a way to get her out of me? I've, I feel myself slipping away, and I don't know what to do. Promise me you'll get her out of me. I can't promise anything. I don't know how this works. We'll find out then. I got places to be. Sorry, I could break. Oh no. <sighs> Cheeks still warm. I could tell you've had your fun. <laughs> God. Julia just turns and leaves. And I will say that this is worth the relief of stress because she saw that however changed Ophelia might be, she still chose to help Juliet to not take over Juliet's body. <laughs> uh, that was an act of love, you know? Um, yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah. she knows that she still has the real Ophelia in there somewhere. She has brought her back. And so you may now roll to re uh, relieve your vice, re indulge your vice rather. All right. Oh. oh man! Oh no! Well, it makes sense because uh, yeah. that it brief wasn't... positive note was tempered by a whole lot of negatives. So <laughs> yeah. you've only you've only relieved two stress. Oh so, god! How many stress did that leave you at? You're quite stressed. I'm at six stress still. <laughs> um, and you are you have two harms. Uh, it sounds like. It sounds like you might need a new character next time, or maybe you want to take Juliet in like this. We'll talk about it. We'll talk yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I feel like Juliet might need some space. Juliet might need to deal with some stuff. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk to Valkos. Okay. Here's. Oh. It seems to me, Jared, that like what we're describing implies a rather long amount of time. Yeah. Um, so, I, uh, <laughs> a possessed person can only remain possessed for so long before things begin to happen to them. I don't know if there's a role associated with this, but um, actually, let's have it be this. Um, uh, Celiac is suddenly like, uh, like startled as a figure lurches out of the shadows, and um, it's the face of Eka Pragwody. He's like, listen to me, listen to me. You crystal man. Whatever you put in me, you got to get out. Do you hear me? She won't let me speak anymore. She's not. She's barely letting me speak now. I'm asking you to get her out of me. And uh, he's begging Celia Khan to get her out of him. Um, I can't feel. Do you understand? When I touch someone, it's not me feeling. It's her feeling. I can't do anything. Just tear her out of me. Um, and uh, let's see how that goes. <laughs> okay, right. I see. Are you just? Ro are you about to roll against yourself? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. What action is is uh, Ekprag rolling? I I guess this would be a tune. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're trying to get a ghost out of you, right? Right. So is this? What is this? He's asking for help. But is this Ekprag rolling? Well, uh, wait, is, is Celiac like he's agreed going to, to help Celiac him? As a job, basically, or like as a... The way we go to Sawtooth for healing, he's going to Celiac I think that's for the idea, yeah. Um, so exorcism. Celiac has to agree to do it, or, or maybe he refuses to do it. Right. Um, interesting. 
Ja. Ähm. There is a war within you, Mr. Woody. <lacht> How am I to intervene in this clash of elements over the ground of your material? You think that because this is the body you are born into that it belongs to you? I cannot assist. I will rather bear witness. I will provide oh the grounds for you to come to an accord. And uh, oh so my this, God. this will be Ekaprag rolling. Okay, great. And um, I think, I think that, okay. <laughs> I think that actually that there's a consequence coming since nobody would help him. That consequence is permanent bonding with Juliet's spirit. He can try to resist this consequence right now and he can hold on a little longer, but he'll take a bunch of stress or he can accept this consequence and Juliet's spirit can no longer leave Ekaprag's body. And those of you that know the game Blades in the Dark, I'm not, I, I don't want to tip my right. hand too much. Ophelia's, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm so sorry, Ophelia's <laughs> spirit. Those of you that know the game Blades in the Dark know that if a spirit bonds permanently to a body, other changes likely occur. So does Ekaprag accept this consequence that the spirit is permanently bound to him, or does he resist this consequence? I think it's clear that he's resisting. Very good. Then um, you are taking six stress right now, Ekprag, but you may roll uh, your, I think it's your resolve to resist. One, two, three. Okay. Resolve. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, nice. nice. Five. Yeah. Ekprag's doing okay. Um, he has managed to hold off Ophelia from completely taking over, but Selyak will not help him. Selyak will only bear witness. Uh, and I can tell you that transformations are still occurring in his body. I think, this yeah. Um, and uh, it's like, um, it's like your spirit is strong. This strength would not be revealed to you except through struggle. struggle continues um and Ekaprag is just like I'm hungry in a way I can't can't understand she's making me hungry and maybe maybe we'll just leave this with one more just brief thing of him like imagine him back in that bathhouse coming up from a kiss with somebody and they look particularly drained and, and sallow and he looks very very satisfied in an unnatural way and that is where we will leave oh. our series thank oh. you to my excellent cat